The Outdoor Show. It's the program that puts you into the peaceful and beautiful home of Mother Nature. It moves you back to that calm fishing pond up north, one step away from Lake Michigan, or into your hunting blind on a brisk fall morning. The Outdoor Show. It's a peaceful program. This is not your mother's outdoor show. This is the WHTC Outdoor Show, hosted by a guy who literally has hunting in his name. Tom Meddendorp is Dutch for Village in the Maiden, or King's Hunting Ground. Your co-host, sometimes, is Tim Becker of Powderhorn Guns and Archery. It's time for what really happens when the guys go up north on that hunting trip. It's time for the WHTC Outdoor Show, presented by My Firearms ETS. That's M-I Firearms ETS on 1450 WHTC, Holland's News Leader. Good morning. Welcome to the Outdoor Show. I'm Tom Mettendorp, and my sometimes co-host, Captain Tim Becker of Powderhorn Guns and Archery, is here. Always. Oh, always. Always. Why do you think we came up with the opening that says sometimes co-host? They didn't want me to be all the talent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nope. I'm Ooh, here again yeah. this week. It was, I'll tell you what, though. I had a rough time waking up. Why? I, was, I don't know. I was whooped. You had a rough time waking up. Yeah. I it, could have slept till 7.30 this morning. It's already after 7. I know. How can you have a rough time waking up? I don't know. The alarm went off, and that was the first time in a long time I said, uh... Well, you were happy when you got here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I finally, uh... Finally nothing, finally mister. Finally somebody, nothing, mister. <laughs> <laughs> finally somebody brought me some Big B coffee. You should be happy. Why do you always add an extra I in there? You're a true Dutchman, aren't you? Yeah. You got an elbow? Yep. You eat pancakes? No, I eat pancakes. Do you? By the heaps. But if you're being a true Dutchman, then it would be a pancake. 99 points. Because it's actually Panakouk. Holy cow. And if it's multiple, it's Panakouken. <laughs> you watch yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but you always say Bigaby. Big B. There's two G's, not two I's. That's fine. It's Big B. Big B. Biggie B. B. <laughs> That's why you didn't know there was one across from your store. <laughs> That's not spelled right. <laughs> I can't see it anymore. They got they got walls up in the way? They have buildings up in the way. Oh, they can't be complete buildings yet. They're all framed. Everything's good. I think they the one to the east has already put... Uh, like rock walls up. Really? Half the building, I think, is rock. I haven't wow. been there much lately either. <laughs> the the sometimes store owner? Yeah. No, I'm full-time <laughs> store owner, just sometimes available. <laughs> I've been on the farm so much lately. Taking care of your goats? Yep. Sheep. <laughs> yep. Are they goats or it. are they sheep? They're sheep. <laughs> you bet, every one of them. <laughs> and what, what are you going to do with those sheep? Raise them. Sell them. Raise them and sell them. So yep. people who like sheep got to get a hold of you. Yep, yep. Or somebody that wants to start their own their own herd, they can get a hold of me. I can sell them rams. I can sell them you. But can they get a hold of you? Because oh, you might sure. be the sometimes phone answerer. Oh, that messages will always get to me. What number? 616-796-0755 is my shop number. They can contact me there. If not, Al does do a great job. I don't know why he doesn't give the cell phone number. <laughs> Something tells me if somebody wants to give Tim money, he's going to answer or he's going to call. He'll return that call. I might even show up at your doorstep. Right. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> well, you're still leaving the message. Right, show right, up at the right, doorstep. yeah. Why are you not answering? I'm at your door. <laughs> before, you're done with the, before you're done with the message, you're sitting there, right? You got it. You got it. Well, you know, you got the sheep, you got the farm, you got everything going on. Yep. You got Big B Coffee right across the street from you. Yes. And then you got a Big B hot cocoa in front of you. I know. Big B. Big B's the best, man. Oh, it's awesome. I so we're sending them an invoice for this, right? <laughs> for this free prom- promotion. <laughs> 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 we wouldn't we wouldn't do that because Big B is the best. We promote them over and over. And they I mean, I talked to a person who actually works at the other place. And I said, "Yeah, I don't, I don't go there. I'm a Big B fan." And Big B. And she says to me, uh, "I am too." Uh, 
<laughs> there you go. The other place just doesn't have as good a coffee. The coffee's smooth. It's yep. enjoyable. Yep. And I told her, I said, it's like when I go to a restaurant. I like to go to a restaurant. I like to sit down and enjoy a cup of coffee while I'm there. And if it doesn't have good coffee, I don't go back. Yep. It's got to have good coffee. Otherwise, I'm just not going to be there. I hear you. But anyway, Big B Coffee, get on down there and just tell them Uncle Tom sent you. Yeah. They'll know who I am. Oh, yeah. Got me a drink named after me. It's called the Uncle Tom's Favorite. You should try it, Chris. What's in it? Is it a coffee drink or a hot chocolate drink? It's a coffee drink with some flavor shots. Tom don't drink hot chocolate. Coffee all the way? Well, I'll drink a hot cocoa. Just not every day. Or Say yeah. hot chocolate for me. Just wants hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. That a boy. Then we got it. He doesn't like it that I call it cocoa. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're not five. <laughs> That's fine. <though. laughs> so, Chris, I ask you a question. What's in it? It's got a couple of different flavor shots in it. I can't tell you because then it wouldn't be a secret. Right, secret anymore. recipe. You I know. got it. And uh, I'll tell you. Don't worry. All right. He doesn't know. <laughs> But you can even get some of it sugar-free. Oh. Not all of it comes sugar-free, not the flavor shots, but some oh, yeah. of them have sugar, some of them are sugar-free. But you can get it with the sugar-free ones. There you go. Yeah. For all so you health nuts out there, you can get right. the healthy Uncle Tom. Yeah. That's right, the healthy one. There you go. You stop over there at Douglas, across from the um, D&W, D&W, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. And, uh, or stop on uh, Chicago Drive and 120th there. Yeah. My, my sister-in-law and brother were just in from out of town, and the first thing they wanted to do was stop at Big B Coffee. Well, and they live in Seattle, the coffee mecca, and they both come back here and love Big B Coffee. Big B. Big B's awesome, and it's Michigan-based. Yeah. yeah. Oh, see, now I didn't know that. There's a lot of things you don't know, my friend. Not much. Yeah, Not sure. Not much. I know Captain Tim. practically all. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the uh, application seasons are out there. Don't forget to get your applications for your different uh, hunts this fall. Yep, I think the majority of them... You have till August fifteenth. Got the. I know that the, the um, antler list. Yep, and I think a lot there. of the applications that are out right now will go from July fifteenth to August fifteenth. Do you know if wild turkey is right now? I would imagine it's July fifteenth to August fifteenth, but I'm I, I'm not sure. Anybody knows for sure? Give us a holler. Yep. Three nine five fourteen fifty. Hey, Let speaking of speaking of fall turkey, fall turkey. This morning I've got a fence in backyard for my dog. It's not fall yet. Fall turkey. This morning. <laughs> The turkey was, fell? <laughs> there was probably 30 young turkeys, baby turkeys in my backyard inside the fence. Really? Oh, it was awesome. And then two, it must have been, what do they call them, broods? What are baby uh, turkeys in a group? You might be right. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, Flock. Are they a flock? I thought a flock was adults. I don't know. I don't know. I think Chris is looking. Baby turkeys. <laughs> That's okay. A flock or a rafter? A oh, rafter. Okay. Yeah. Flock or a rafter. And the young males are Jakes, the young yep. females are Jennies. Well, ah, I, I didn't, I didn't know, know about they were Jennies either, no. <laughs> Thank you, Google. Yeah. <laughs> we knew they were Jakes, but I didn't know they were Jennies. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Yeah, so anyways, there was a bunch in my backyard, and uh-huh. yep, I walked out in the backyard, and they kind of took me by surprise, and they all just stood there and looked at me. I thought you guys fatten up for about two years, and I'll find you, Tom's. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great. That's the first time since I've been there. And when they get oh, all grown up, you're gonna find them back, huh? You got it. In probably seven, eight years that I uh, that I've had the babies actually in the backyard. Sweet. Well, once, twice a week, all the turkeys do come into the backyard, but it's usually the the hens and the toms or the jakes. But did you apply for fall turkey? Yeah. No, I haven't yet. I still got to apply for my antler list too. Well, did you did you apply for? Uh, oh, you didn't apply for your antlers. Not you yet. No, done. I will. Yep, I definitely will. Well, when we when we come back, we'll talk about a little bit about what happened with our deer season and our take, uh, you know, the harvest and so on, and what's going on with all that. The outdoor show is brought to you by Westonbrook Mower, where they service what they sell. All units are ready to use when they leave the store, and Westonbrook submits your warranty information so you don't have to. Stop into the Holland or the Jenison store, check them out on your computer at westonbrookmower.com, or call them at 616-396-5733. Lines are open. Give us a call, 396-1450. We'll be back here shortly on the outdoor show. Welcome back to the Outdoor Show, brought to you by Michigan Firearms, your personal protection and concealed carry specialist. We're back, ready to talk with you. Give us a call, 395-1450. In fact, we've got a caller on the line right now. Firearms, your personal protection and concealed carry specialist. 
Oh, hey, it's giving us the the replay here, Ron. Ron, you there? <laughs> Chris, remember that thing I was saying about a well-oiled machine? I do machine? remember that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Way to go on that, buddy. You see, they put in a new phone system here. Oh, I'm sure. And yeah. being a, a part-time employee, nobody explained it to me. So I'm not entirely sure. So did you hang up on her caller? I might. Let me see. <laughs> no, he's still... He's still there, but he can't figure out where. Hmm, this is interesting. Huh. <laughs> well, well, Ron, if you can hear us, hang on tight. <laughs> we'll get to you, man. We'll get back. But, you know... Use the rotary phone. See what happens there. <laughs> Tim, uh, August 15th. Yes. They're going to have the food plot, food plot um, seminars seminar. At, Boy, was that neat not, last not year. Not seminars, but w- what was it? The food plot show? Um, it's for the farmer's co-op. Over well, no, at, it was over a sem- food plot seminar, I think. Well, they're going to have all those multiple se- uh, multiple yeah. food plots that yep. people can see what it looks like. I wonder how they're coming along. That's August 15th from 9 to 3. That's over at... Um, the Farmer's Co-op there, right yep. in Vriesland. Yep, right in Vriesland. Right at the corner of 64th and, and uh, Byron Byron Road. Yep. And uh, you'll be able to get in there. You'll be able to see the different seed varieties and so on. But yep. then you'll be able to go out and look at the different the growth plots, and, how they grow and yeah. what, what happens. That was really cool when we were there last year. Yeah, and, was, they're, and they're doing it again. This will be the second year in a row that they're doing it. And uh, uh, Terry would like everybody to get on out there and check it out. Oh, well, yeah, definitely, definitely. Any Anybody that's interested in any type of food plotting they have everything there and very 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 not knowledgeable on it let's try this good morning ron hey good morning guys wait oh he's over on the phone over there good morning ron can you hear us dang (laughs) (laughs) sorry ron hold on bud (laughs) he'll figure it out we heard him coming through the phone but that was about it well you know you, you talk about the food plots and everything else you get over there and you check that out over at Riesland Co-op. Yep. But if you need an area cleared, you can get extreme brush hogging done by Earth Solutions. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, my buddy Matt, of yep. course. He's got the Earth Solutions. He does the extreme brush hogging. He'll clear and prep a site for your food plots. He'll also do uh, clearing and grubbing for shooting lanes. Yeah. And if you, you need to have a driveway or something put in where it's, you know, soft and mushy and you want to get yep. that taken care of, he'll clear that and he'll take dig that out and he'll put in the sand and the crushed concrete and the asphalt. He'll take care of all those things, including stump grinding. Nice. So Earth Solutions takes care of prepping it for you and the Farmer's Co-op takes care of your planting. Yep. It's just, it's awesome. Perfect. Of course, you want to get a hold of Earth Solutions at 616-566-0390. Yep. Talk to Matt. He'll take care of you over there. Yep. You know, we talked about those applications and stuff. Yeah. I just wanted to throw out some some info because when we come back at, at, at 7.30, if we get the phone figured out, yeah. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to be talking to Ron about the Big Red Classic coming up. Oh, okay. Okay. But, uh, See we, out, Ron out fishing this morning? Yeah, he's out there right now. They're, they're in the uh, Summer Challenge, Michigan Steel Hunters. Oh, okay. Yeah, they didn't tell you about it. They were afraid you'd take all, you know. Win, yeah. yeah. Boy, we hit them up real good two <laughs> nights ago. Before we get into the fishing, though, and we talked about getting the applications in for antlerless. Yep. I wanted to tell you something. Last year, 2014, the hunting seasons, they came out with a report. We had roughly 615,000 hunters statewide. Yep. You realize we only took 329,000 deer? Really? Yeah. We dropped 15%. In the harvest from 2013 to 2014. How do they know that number? I don't know. <laughs> See, I'm wondering that. I know that they have. Is that just off check station? That's a good question. Now, you do get your surveys, you know, yeah. and, and that's, a, that's a sampling because I don't get surveys every year. See, and I never get surveys for whitetail. I've had them for bear in Michigan, mm. and I think I've had them for spring turkey. I get them for waterfowl, or not waterfowl, uh, migratory birds, you know, yep. migratory bird survey and so on. Well, that's when you but get your license, too. That You just say yes, and then how many right how there. Many, that's right. A they rough they guess, do a survey yeah. on that. That's a good question. Yeah, I wonder I don't, I don't know how they get the numbers for sure, but they did say um, the decline was the greatest in the Upper Peninsula, where the harvest was down 36%. I believe that with those those two winter kill-offs now. Oh, it was terrible. Plus, plus you couldn't... Uh, you couldn't get in to hunting spots. Yeah. My cousin went to go up there to get into his hunting spot. He was on the snowmobile. He took the snowmobile to get to his hunting spot. Snowmobile, tree stand, everything. 
he went out there at 8 a.m. I think he came back at 4 o'clock. And you don't, you don't have that long of a trek to get to your... Mm-hmm. He kept getting stuck because of the snow being so deep. No kidding. It was, it was crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And the DNR contributes the, the snow uh, to a lot of this because, like, last year, winter started early, and three feet of snow was on the ground in some areas before November 15th. Jeez. Yeah. So, you know, the... the That's Alaska. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Pretty much. Jeez. Pretty much. Well, I, I, I think I heard Alaska was actually warmer. I believe it. <laughs> so, anyway, the uh, um, due to those conditions and stuff, it really caused a lot of the headache and, and, yeah. and heartache uh, for the deer and so on. And uh, let's see, across all hunting seasons, 84,099 people hunted deer in the UP in 2014, which was down about 19% from 2013. So we were down hunter numbers by 19%, but we were down harvest by 36%. Hmm. So it was it was it was pretty bad. Yeah, pretty bad. Anyway, remember get a hold of Earth Solutions five six six zero three nine zero if you want to get that food plot cleared. And then you can go and check out the Farmers Co op Elevator in Hudsonville for your food. They're your food plot headquarters. They have over forty different seed varieties to choose from. They provide in house soil testing as well as fertilizers, lime, and equipment to plant, maintain, and get maximum performance out of your food plot. Visit the Farmers Co op at thirty three zero two Postrix. Prospect Street in Hudsonville for a complete list of products and services. Check them out online at fcelevator.com. Lines are open. Give us a call 395-1450. We'll be back here shortly on the Outdoor Show. Welcome back to the Outdoor Show, brought to you by Powderhorn Guns and Archery. For all your arrow-knocking, gun-cocking, fish-hooking, flag-waving, stand-up-and-sing, God bless America, hunting and fishing needs. Lines are open. Give us a call, 395-1450. We're back, ready to answer your questions, right here on the Outdoor Show. That just makes a day better. You whistling or the Oh, not intro? me whistling. That's terrible. <laughs> That's terrible. I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Yeah. You know, I, we'll get to the Big Red Classic. Uh, when Ron gives us a call, he's, they're out there fishing right now, and they're, they're doing their thing. Uh, so we'll, we'll get more on, on the Big Red Classic here in a moment. But we were talking about those application yes. periods. Yep. Um, I did find out that the... Now where to go? <laughs> um, <laughs> spring, fall wild turkey. That's got to be in by the first. Yep. That's next uh, week Saturday. Yep. August first is the deadline. Drawing results posted August ten. Leftover licenses on sale at ten a.m. for applicants. August seventeen for over the counter buy is August twenty four. So that means if you drew your tag. You can go get it on the 17th. If you just want to try to buy a leftover, you can go on the 24th. That's all on fall turkey. Fall turkey. And that. Which other ones do you want to know? But we got to get the fall turkey application in by next Saturday. Next Saturday. So, folks, make sure you get that taken care yep. of. Take care of them little critters. Well, yeah. Yep. That's one of our biggest recovery uh, stories in yeah. Michigan. And I think that's that season runs a long time. I think it's like. September 15 or 20th or something like that, it starts, and it goes right up to November 14th? Uh, I think it starts on October 2. You could be right. I'm just saying. No, I think it's... It seems I could to me pick when any we number, do, and you'd go, what? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, why wouldn't you? Um, <laughs> something else that I'd like to know, and I, I haven't seen it, are, is there early doe hunts this year? I know last year there wasn't because of the deer population being down from the diseases in the winters, but uh, that's a really good question. Actually, yeah, I've had a lot of people ask me that at the store, and since I don't sell licenses there, I don't really, I can't answer that because I don't know. I, I would kind of think no, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'm looking. Yeah. 
I do know right now is a great time to get out in the woods and start to see these deer. They're really starting to show up uh, shortly before dark and right after light. Uh, your deer are I've starting. Been, I've been seeing lots of them. Yeah, and your your bucks are really starting to develop their their antlers right now, and uh, you're still going to see a lot of growth over the next month. On the on the antler. On the, yeah, on these white tails. So right now they've grown are they half grown are they you know i i really don't know how grown they are but i do know that they're going to put on quite a bit more i think they grow right up until september sometimes even first week or two into september that they're growing that they're growing and then the velvet so i would say we still got a big month of growing okay and somebody i read someplace one time that they put on a lot of their mass and their uh their height in the last month on the, month, month for their month. antlers, yeah, and they're all in the velvet right now. The velvet Correct. doesn't start coming off until after the first oh, of September, or mid-September, yeah, it's, right? Yeah, usually mid-September. I've behind my house every year. I get a couple bucks that are in there, and they they hold their velvet until week week and a half before season. And usually first of October, I see a, a lot of bucks that still got some pretty red looking antlers. Really? Yep. I like the color of the deer right now. I do too. The color of their yeah, uh, they're almost like a reddish color. Yeah, they're the color of their hide is, yep. is pretty awesome. But anyway, you know, I, I here I am spending time looking for this, and it's just not good talk. Yeah, I spend too much time looking at the computer and yeah. not listening to you, and it just doesn't work. Yeah, <laughs> and we're wondering why we can't get um, we we don't have Ron on the line, but we'll talk about the Big Red Classic. Absolutely, and salmon fishing. Yeah. For a little bit here, with the salmon fishing, you uh, you've been out there. Yep, yeah, I've been going out quite a bit lately. What are we looking lately. at? What are we looking at for depth, uh, temperature, depth? all um, that good stuff? Well, now two nights ago, the temperature was like sixty-five or sixty-eight degrees on the surface, mm-hmm. and I was fishing. I fished anywhere from seventy to, well, I'd say ninety, about a hundred foot of water. I found all my fish. Everybody okay. else. Slow down right there for a second. That was total depth. Total depth. That's the water. depth of the water. Yep, in the, the, the water that I was fishing. Okay. Um, so anywhere from 70 to 90, a lot of people were out in, or 70 to 100, a lot of people stayed out in that 95 foot of water, and I found all my fish in 75 to 78 foot of water, and they came one after another. Now we picked up... Now a, how deep are you fishing then? Well, the lake trout were right on the bottom. Um, of course, we picked up a lot of lake trout, lots of them. And the kings were... So they were down there at 75 feet of depth, or 70 feet of depth. Yes, yep. Okay. Uh, actually, 78 was my best number. It, it, we hit a north or south troll on 78 foot of water and just started banging away on them. But you said the, the trout were down at the bottom. Right, so we were 78 foot down. We were right on the right on right the, on floor? the bottom. The, bo- the, the cannonballs right. are bouncing the bottom. Oh. Yep. We were using... For lake trout. Now, we caught more lake trout than we caught kings. Um, Mm -hmm. Our kings we found in, I would say, 60 foot of water to 30 is where we picked up some kings. Okay. Um, We lost a a very, very nice king uh, shortly behind the boat. A friend of mine had him on a 300 copper, and we took him right to the back of the boat, and he spit the the hook right at the back. Oh, no. Buddy Mitch kind of thought... You got to be kidding me! I just fought this thing for no. ten minutes. Okay, are the kings hitting those imposter lures, or are the? Um, I have not been running a lot of imposter lures for kings. I've been I found out how well these imposter lures work for lake trout on the bottom. I've got a double orange um, imposter lure, which is a imitation meat rig. It's a new spoon that we've been carrying at the shop that is just phenomenal. And we put the, the orange right on the bottom, and we're taking probably 60% of our fish on that bait. Now, really? Yeah. Now, I ran that double orange on a five color, so I'd imagine we're running about 15 foot, 12 foot, and I ran it up high for steelhead, and we took two kings on that. Really? Same so, color? Same color. But It's a double orange. Yeah, it's a, it's a, well, we call it the double orange. It's got an orange top on it. It looks just like a bait fish. And they have been just loving that. And the lake trout have been just destroying it. So we've been putting that on a downrigger right on the bottom. And they double, go off. Double orange, a.k.a. Tim special. You got it. You got it. <laughs> we've been doing great with that. And uh, 
but then we've also been running the uh, spinning glows with the Dodgers. Now I switched up out of the Dodger, and I'm using the E chips that are in a all chrome, and that's okay. out producing the Dodgers for me. Now, when you say Dodgers, Dodgers are a tin can. People call them. It's a flat. It's a flat board. Okay. No, nah, board isn't. That's what I use, but it's a it's a flat <laughs> fat, flat piece of a, like of aluminum, and it's a enticer in front of your spinning glow. It circles in the water. Okay. Yeah. But is your lure itself or is those a, imposters? Those actually circle. Yeah, I think. that is actually an imitation meat rig. It okay. is a meat rig that does not have meat, and they're awesome. Now I have another guy that comes in and he buys probably 10 of them a week and he is catching just monster kings on them but huh. he's also something else i found out that he's doing um he's running them off copper and he found that that they're out producing but instead of running a 20 pound lead he's been running a 12 okay lighter lead and he says that has improved my bite 50 percent. he says but i am losing some big kings because he's snapping that, that lead. Oh, the lead's snapping yep. because it just doesn't have enough yep. strength to it. So that's what he's been doing. But he's getting more bites. He, oh, yeah. Yeah, he's hmm. he's brought in some very impressive fish to the store. Wow. Yeah. Where's so. the pictures online? Yeah, it's computer and and Tim. and. <laughs> Come on, man. you got to get the pictures. you got to post them on Facebook. we got to see this stuff. Yeah, I know. You know the saying, pictures or it didn't happen. I tell you, that's tell I'm fishing. That's yeah. exactly how it goes. <laughs> Are we saying that it just didn't happen? No, no. Are happened. you telling a story? I could be. You would not be telling me a story, would you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know anymore. No, well, no, no. They've been great. Um, well, today I know the Holland Steelheaders are out there for the summer challenge. Yep. And I know next week is the Big Red Classic. Yep. Now, traditionally, the Big Red Classic has provided dollars for the Boys and Girls Club here, here in Holland. And uh, they also have the um, Women's Tata Tourney. The Tata Tournament is... Uh, Probably Friday. That's on Friday for the women. And um, they uh, that raises money for cancer awareness. Good call. So those are that's coming up, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a, uh, just a couple moments. The Outdoor Show is brought to you by Advantage Marine in Zealand with competitive prices and personalized service to meet all your needs. Repair, storage, winterizing, parts, and more. Call Advantage Marine in Zealand at 616-748-9235 or stop in and see Dave at 8755 Riley Street in Zealand. That's at the corner of 88th and Riley on the northeast side of Zealand. Of course, you can't stop and see him today because I know he's in that uh, summer challenge tournament. <laughs> Lines are open. Give us a call, 395-1450. We'll be back here shortly on the Outdoor Show. Welcome back to the Outdoor Show, brought to you by MI Firearms ETS, educating people in the safe and responsible use of firearms since 2001. And we're going to get right to it. Ron, you there? Hey, how you doing, bud? I'm doing well. I'm hoping you were catching fish. We uh, we were. Sorry, I'm a little late. I uh, had a nice 15-pound king ripping uh, when I was supposed to be calling you, so apologize oh, for that. That's okay. Did you, get him, did you get him in? Yeah, we did. Good. Um, yep. Uh, David is doing a good job. Good. That's, I just got done telling everybody that they couldn't see Dave over at Advantage Marine today because he's fishing in the tournament. <laughs> That's right. He's the, he's the rig man back here today. So How's it going? Are we getting a bunch? Uh, well, we're just nicely getting set up. We were trying to figure out the direction this morning. We got uh, some you know, three-footers coming out of the south, Ooh. and uh, we were trying to troll right into those waves, and uh, we found that the direction really is to the north. So we uh, swung the boat to the north, and we no more than put it on a north troll, and we had that big king go off. And uh, so it's, uh, it's a little lumpy out here, but uh, the, guys are, uh, the guys are getting it done. Yeah. What, uh, now, this, this tournament's not as, as special as the BRC, right? They're all special. Um, well, they're all special. Um, this is the Steelheaders, the Holland Steelheaders chapter uh, puts this tournament on. They've been doing this for, oh, as long as I can remember. And uh, this is uh, the men's tournament. They also do a women's tournament. This is a one-day shootout. Um, catch 15 fish, weigh in your 10 biggest. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a Holland chapter tournament is what it is. I was just I was looking on the Big Red Classic uh I don't know if it's the Big Red Classic website. It's yep, yeah, BigRedClassic.com. It, yep. it says Holland Steelheader Summer Challenge was today. 
Yep, that's today. That's the one you're in right now? That is correct. Okay. And then they had, uh, then I see all the different information about the, the uh, Big Red Classic here, and then, of course, the Big Red Classic Women's uh, Tata Tournament. That is, yeah, that's, now the Big Red Classic Tournament is next weekend. That is a, uh, it's a pro-am tournament. It's part of the tournament trail circuit. There's uh, 16 tournaments up and down Lake Michigan that start uh, in Michigan City in the early spring, and they kind of work their way north uh, throughout the summer. And Holland's uh, uh, tournament is next weekend, uh, the 1st and 2nd of August. So and then we do a we do a women's tata tournament on Friday, um, and the girls uh, get to participate. Um, and they have to actually the girls have to pull in and net all of the fish on that tournament. Oh, nice! And they and they raise money for um, breast cancer awareness. I think they donated thirty five hundred dollars last year to breast cancer uh, awareness. Cool. Nice. And then um, the Big Red Classic. Does that one fund? Or, or provide funds for the Boys and Girls Club? It does. Boys and Girls Club is uh, is one of the charities, and in the um, water clarity uh, project that's going on is also um, a, a charity that the Big Red Classic uh, supports. Um, so those two charities are what the Pro-Am supports, and we got one going right now. Nice. Good. What do you got him going on? He uh, just went on meat. We just put meat down on a dipsy. And uh, this is a big king. It's uh, it's ripping. I'll put this on the uh, on the radio. <laughs> uh, Bill's on it, and uh, the fish is up on the surface right now. He's running hard. Good, guys. What depth of water are you fishing in, Ron? Uh, we are in eighty three point four right now. Nice, nice. Yeah, I know. Two days ago, I found a lot of fish in seventy eight to seventy five. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, we just put our first meat rig down, and that that rod wasn't in the water two minutes, and it went off. So good, good. Stack them up then. Ever you using those imposter lures? Uh, we've got one down. It hasn't gone off yet, but we're uh, we're giving it a shot. Good, good. Yeah. I just got them to them last night. So oh, okay. They're trying them out. Yeah. <laughs> the. Uh... Do you have the one with the orange back across the top? Um, it is in the bag. We've got the, the glow on both sides uh, down on the uh, rigger right now. Okay. Um, my One of my best running, even over uh, over a chrome dodger and a spinny, is I've been putting that orange one right on the bottom, and we're taking, oh, really? Lake, yeah, taking Lakers left and right on that. Okay. All right. And, well, we'll give that a shot. We haven't put that out yet. Yeah, our, we'll, uh, we'll put it on the corner and see what happens. Yeah. Our biggest Lakers have been coming on that, too. We've got them up to 18 pounds. Okay, so that's on that orange. Okay. That's on that orange, yep. Hey, is Perfect. This, is, we'll, we'll give that a shot. Is this legal to get advice uh, during the tournament? Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Sure. Open communication. I'm just hoping that when I start fishing tournaments again, he gives me the information. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, last night, Ron, you were telling me about you know, the, the degree of the boat and stuff and yeah. uh, the degree of travel and so on. And yep. this morning you mentioned going south and then going back yep. to the north. And I didn't realize how intricate it can be oh, yeah. with on the big body of water like that because yeah. we, we started relating it to river fishing and that all the correct. different techniques we use on the river yep and well we were yep absolutely tom we were talking about that this morning and uh you know we've got a probe that we run down below the surface of the water and uh we know how fast we're going on top and then we also then know how fast we're going down below and if you have ever been on, on a river, and I know you have, but mm -hmm. people that have been river fishing may know that the nose of a fish is always pointed right into the current, and uh -huh. the food floats by the fish. And so what we try to emulate, even in Lake Michigan, the fish are doing the exact same thing. Their nose is into the current, and we try to have the food or our bait float right by the fish. And that's why when we were going south this morning, we were not going into the current. We were going with it. And we were not presenting the uh, the bait to the fish in the in the proper way. And we literally, when we turned the to the and got into the current, it wasn't four or five minutes. And we had our first fish go off. Yeah, huh. that's just really interesting because you said the waves are coming out of the south. So the waves are coming up from the south, and you were going into them, but the current underneath was going the other direction. Right. The current is actually coming straight out of the north uh, today. Yeah. Two days ago, it was doing the same thing. We had one go on a south troll, and we turned around, and we 
probably had 15, 18 of them on a, on a North Troll. Okay, hold on a minute, guys, okay? Yeah. I'm going to yep. hold on. I think he's probably getting that, that, that king in there. And, Netting uh, it. Netting it. They got, that'd, be the the second, man. that'd be the second king, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just, uh, I had to let these guys uh, give these guys a little direction. Sorry, guys. That's okay. We wanted to hear the screaming. Yeah. We do this. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to hear you yell at them. Yeah. Still might. <laughs> still, you're still fighting that king? Yeah. We got him right to the back of the boat right now. Good. Hold on a minute. Yeah. Sweet. I always think it's cool when Ron comes on and we talk about getting the, getting the fish. And you know what he told me last night? He said every time he calls in, fish are on. Nice. So it's got to be us. Yeah, I agree. It's got to be because I of agree. us. <laughs> he calls in, and the fish go and on. And lift him up. Well, there you go. Right, How big is he? He's probably about a 12-pound king. Really nice fish. Good, good, good. Yeah, we definitely had a hard time coming across kings two nights ago. We took some, but it was it was tough. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm encouraged that the that, that meat rig went off that fast because uh, we'll throw some more of that down here this morning. What type of meat are you using? Uh, right now, that is um, the Dreamweaver okay. uh, yeah, stuff right now. So Okay, great, great. Nice. Well, Ron, you know, it, it's always awesome because when you call in, the fish are on. You told me last night the fish are always on when you call. And so, you know, you guys, I love, I love talking to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're getting, you know, what time's the tournament in today? Uh, the way in we have to be in the weigh-in line at Yacht Basin Marina at uh, 1.30. So if any of your uh, listeners want to see some really nice fish weighed in, come on out to Yacht Basin at 1.30. The, uh, all of the fish will be weighed in at that time. Yacht Basin, Perfect. 1.30. Everybody get out there, check that out, and see what uh, right, comes in today. But, Ron, if you're running short, you know, at noon or so, go ahead yeah. and give me a call. We'll put some fish on the line. <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> We can right, try, we can try texting, too. To All right, thanks, Ron. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Ron. Talk to you soon. Talk to you next week right here on the Outdoor Show.